the movie actors doing a web series and also the podcast and the thing and and the voiceover and the voice right. well yeah and the voiceover <laughs> and the voiceover and the voiceover yeah. you yeah. know who you are <laughs> <laughs> turn it up get ready you're tuned in to feel buzz weekly weekly and now prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts chuck duran and stacy j aswan Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. We are so excited to have with us a rock star. She is an on-camera actor, a voice actor you hear all over the place. She's the co-host of the podcast Fitness Confidential. She's a two-time cookbook author. Shall I go on? Let's just get buzzed with her. She's flat out awesome. She's Anna Vicino. Yeah! Woo! I, I want to applaud. I just feel like... Oh, we applaud, man. Look at this. Applaud. Right on the microphones. Right on the mic. Ding, 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 you ding, know ding, there's going to be some dude out there saying, yeah, I, heard your your comments now, I heard folks. clapping on your video. <laughs> Audio. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, that. Anna. Oh my goodness. Hi guys, gracious. thanks for Hi. having me. Man, I gotta say, we're well, so excited. Absolutely, we're extremely excited. We've been wanting to have you on a show for a long time. That's really sweet of you. Yes. So um, I'm very and, happy to uh, And we know you're super, super, super busy. And oh, once... and she's also a stand-up comic. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, that. Maybe yeah. she'll do a little routine for us tonight. Mm -hmm. <gasps> no, um, but uh, <laughs> but it's so cool, man, because <laughs> we, Stacy and I, are are you know we watch. There's certain shows that we love watching on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we were watching, you know, some of our favorite shows on ABC mm. uh, on Thursdays, we're hearing you voicing and voicing and voicing these promos, and we're like, "Oh my God, mm -hmm. that's Anna Vicino, yeah. right?" ABC. And then, hold on, I'm telling oh. my story. Sorry. And then there was a progression. And then a couple of years later, today, <laughs> present yeah, time, point. we're watching some of our favorite shows on NBC, which I always used to complain, by the way. Mm. Because I'm always listening to promo voices. Likewise. And I'm think and I'm saying and you too, right? Yeah. And we're always saying, that guy yeah. does not fit any of these promos that he's voicing. His mm. energy is just not really, you know, it's not young enough, it's not cool enough, it's not hip enough. You know, Jennifer Lopez's show, you know, right. dance world, and then it's like World dance of world. Dance. World, I mean, sorry, World yeah. of Dance. World of Dance. I loved World Next, of Dance, by the way. Oh, Me too. Yes. Obsessed with World of Dance. Um, <laughs> Obsessed. Uh, and then, Total side note, but yes. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, boom. There she is. There you are. Yes. And now we can't get rid of you. And now you're here. I hope. This is freaking amazing. And we don't want I will to. say the, the the one thing that you can't control at all in this business is when they decide to get rid of you. Yes. Yeah. So I am enjoying the ride for until that moment comes when all of a sudden one you know one guy starts going. You know what? Mm. Yeah. You know what? That voice is annoying me. Mm -hmm. Or whatever they say. I don't yeah, know. I, I imagine they have be. conversations where they're just all kind of scratching their heads and, yeah. you know, eating Cheetos or something. Yeah. Exactly. You know, deciding exactly. that. that we're, so until then, I'm enjoying it very much. Well, so that's thank all you. you can do with life, mm -hmm. right? Is Absolutely. Just enjoy and be yep. present to what's happening yep. and not yeah. worry about what's coming or what happened. Mm -hmm. That's, you know. Um, so, so let's dive in. Okay. Um, okay. So our voices are encased in our bodies. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and how we take care of them is really important. Yes. So what is your self-care regimen? I mean, where, where? I, You know, it's interesting. I, I'm not a huge uh, throat coat tea, lozenge, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that Chinese herbal goo yes. thing is that they have that uh, to me tastes much too sweet. Yeah. I think it's mostly just sugar yeah. juice. But I always call it onomatopoeia, but I know it's not that, it, but it's, it's got, like a buck a buck a buck. Yeah, yeah. it's got yeah. something. Yeah. And uh, people swear by it. They love it. And mm -hmm. the Grethers, that's the other one. I bought yes. all the things. Yes. I, for me personally, I have been, uh, which is why I wrote the cookbooks, I've been kind of on this food journey in 2002 was diagnosed with celiac disease. Mm. So the, the only known maintenance you know, prescription for that is to not have gluten because gluten activates the autoimmune response. Right. So then a bunch of stuff cleared up and then I eventually went kind of low carb and then went totally low carb, which is what my cookbooks are. And then I personally had to go dairy free. And when I went dairy free, mm. that really cleared up any possibility of a post nasal drip. Um, low carb will also clear that up in most people. Not everybody mm -hmm. has a dairy allergy. I know that that's a very in vogue thing yeah. right. to say, but right. actually not every, some people actually can tolerate dairy and yeah. it's fine. And when they cut out the sugars and grains, they find that that post nasal drip goes away. And there's some talent, like some friends of mine, they, they have done this now and they have said like, oh, I was like in sessions going, <clears throat> 
yeah. <clears throat> before every take because mm -hmm. there's like schmutz, they're clearing out. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they cleaned out the sugars and grains out of their diets, it literally went away. Wow. Yeah. And so it's, it's very drastic. It's a very drastic, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a bunch of other things are helpful with it too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I for vocal stuff, the other thing is like, I hate being that a hole who's like, I don't, I'm in a bar and like, I don't want to yell. I have to protect yeah. my voice. Yeah. Um, but also most of the time I just don't think about it. I'll be drinking a martini. I'll be like, blah, 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 blah. And then the next day I'll be like, oh my God, I have to remember not to yell. Cause it really does. The yes. older I get, I've noticed it really like shreds mm -hmm. the voice Yeah. or going anywhere where you, a friend of mine taught me a trick. If you're talking to somebody in a loud bar, you put your, your thumb on their ear and close basically, cl you know that little flap over yeah. your ear. Close it, and then you they'll he you'll hear the sound ear. waves, or on your the, own. No, on theirs. Like if you're like leaning in, obviously somebody you know, and maybe okay. we can't do yeah, this. Yeah, this would be really weird with somebody that you don't <laughs> yeah. know. Do, do it with your loved ones and your <laughs> yeah. friends, do, not with a stranger. Well, at least but as you a lean child. in, and yeah. if it's a really loud, like a concert or a loud ah. bar or something, you can lean in and say like, "Hey, I'm gonna run to the bathroom," I'll say, and you can actually tell them that and save your voice. Little All tip, right. Little She's but full of tips. That's a good that's tip. Your next tip. Book. That's your next book. So not your own, but the other person's. <laughs> the yeah. other person. Stick your finger in their ear <laughs> and say, hey, I'm going to the bathroom. I'll be right yeah. back. I don't know. I don't know why that's the, the best example I could come <laughs> yeah, up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say I've done a lot of video games and, oh boy. They can be tough. They can be really yeah. tough. And you just, I feel like there's a lot more awareness now and all the voice directors yes. are super cool. Yeah. And they get that like, we really want to stack all the hard stuff at the end. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that very much. But I think, I think it was about two years ago, I did a Scottish Dwarf only for an hour. It wasn't like a long session, but it was so much yelling. Mm. And and it made, it was one of those things where I thought I literally broke my voice. I thought it was broken. Wow. And I just kind of like pushed through. And the only remedy is to stop talking yeah. yeah you just have to stop talking and let it heal up yeah. that's it yeah. and uh and i thought to myself have i maybe i've been doing this wrong the whole time <laughs> and then i was you know what i mean because you're yeah. like i thought i had like you know yes. diaphragmatic support and yeah. all that but no if you just mm. scream a lot you're just gonna absolutely yeah you're just gonna shred it yeah, yeah. i we have a friend of ours who uh uh, who's a, a successful voice actor in promos and trailers. And when we were talking once around the table saying about video games and because he does some. Yeah. And and I said, well, what do you do when they say when you're, they're screaming? And he goes, oh, I just tell them I don't do screams. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, so you Stunt literally screamer. don't do this? No, I will do anything they want me to do except mm -hmm. screaming. Right. Yeah. And if it requires that, I'm not the guy for the yeah. job. And I was like, wow. So it, it, it's drastic because he says it he did drastic. it one time. Yeah. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like, uh, I mean, I don't like a lot of the dying anyway, but I'm yeah. always relieved when it's like, yay. It's just like a dialogue game that makes me and very happy. Me too. And I'm always relieved with those voice directors who are like, okay, one take. Like, we just need yes. one. Thank you. Yes, yes, you do just need one. <laughs> like, yes. Thank yes. you. for. I, I really appreciate that one. No one needs to listen to Death by Electrocution 47 takes anyway. Exactly, it's, man. That's just it's um, abuse. And so I want to stay on, 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 yeah. on the food thing real quick yeah. because yeah. it was so funny because when I go or anybody goes to your website, yeah. yeah, the main thing that you see is you and your cooking. I mean, this is like such a big part of your life, it is. right? Mm -hmm. and, it is. And like, it took me a while to get to the voiceover <laughs> stuff. I'm like, where's the voiceover Be information? Well, because those people who hire me for voiceover don't go to my, right. I mean, they might go to the website, right. but they're, it's all mostly going through my agent. It's mm -hmm. all mostly that. So I, I have the voiceover section on my website you do. and, and, right. and, uh, it's, it's there, but yes, what people mostly know me for, you know what I mean? It's a small I pool totally of people who know. are hiring yes. me. It's yes. a large pool of people who are buying cookbooks. So yes. I've but tailored it more towards that I actually that for sure. love yeah. that, going to your site and 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 having th uh, this passion of yours be right there, you know, up, in, up front and center and searching around and going. The reason why it's so cool is because it's not like, you know, voiceover is a side hustle for you. Mm, right. I mean, you are one of the busiest voice actors in Los Angeles, period. There's mm -hmm. no denying that. I'm very lucky that, that you, is you the case. are. And, yes. and and I'm sure you've done many things to, to get there, which we'll talk about. Yes. But I love the fact that you go to your website and yeah. you're like, oh, am I at the right place? And you're like, yeah, you are. But you're like, here I am. And it's right. so cool. A lot of yeah. personality. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, uh, I, you know, back when 
I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't working that much voiceover or on camera. And I had just was on a show that was canceled. And I went through a very bad depression after that. And it was, I buried myself into gluten-free recipe writing and baking and blogging and it, and then just slowly started to put on weight and put on weight from just eating all of the baked goods that were so delicious. Yeah. And then I met Vinny Tortorich, the guy I podcast with in mm -hmm. 2012. And he said, you know, I wrote a book and they won't, they won't do anything with it unless I have a podcast. So I know you know how to do that. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> It's like what a lovely. It, it, I know it was not a good yeah. solicitation. <laughs> right. Good heart. And sell, yet baby. I still Just, said yes. Yeah. Okay. But also too you were because not yourself at the time. I was not a bit. I must have been really still depressed. Yeah. No, but I I kind of felt like in those times. Here's the deal: when you're working in voiceover or in comedy or on camera, they're all you know. Highs you're waiting lows. for the phone to ring, and I don't like that feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't like being the girl on the other end, I hope he calls me, I hope he calls today. Um, because generally when you have that feeling, they don't call. Yeah. Yeah. When the, the happiest working actors that I've found are busy doing other things and living their lives and then the phone rings and they figure out how to work it all out. Yep. Perfect. I love yep. that. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. So, so yeah. how did, how did your cooking, your, uh, and we're not talking about your cookbooks, but yeah. how did that and 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 changing the way that you eat and even think about all that. How did that change things for you with your performing life? You know, comedy, voiceover, and your fa your family life as well. I, I mean, well, it didn't change my family life because I still was making three meals. I was making a meal for my husband, a meal for myself, and a meal for my daughter. Which moms mm. don't do that. It's yeah. a bunch of malarkey. Don't do it. You should just make one meal and feed the whole family. Yeah. All right. I broke yeah. the fourth wall, but. No, I had that's to good. on that. Oh, I, had, that's an I had to tell breaker. the other moms. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Because a lot of us good do that advice. and we, we cook multiple things because right. we want to make everybody happy, but ultimately then you, you make yourself crazy. But uh, I, the, the way that it changed my life was that I would just constantly be like, okay, well, I have this on camera audition or I have, you know, pilot season's coming up. I guess I need to lose 10, 15 pounds. I'll go on Weight Watchers and just knock it out. Mm -hmm. And then by like day four on Weight Watchers, I'd be crying and like eating a cheeseburger in the parking lot of McDonald's. Like, mm -hmm. granted, it was lettuce wrapped because I couldn't have the bun anymore. But <laughs> well, still, and French see, fries. You, and you, like, tried. you were trying. You know, I, was, it was, I wasn't making Small victories. <laughs> Small victories. And I'm happy to admit my bad choices to the world. Uh, but I, uh, listen, I grew up eating McDonald's. I love McDonald's. Yeah, me too. They have the best fries, man. Yeah, the best fries. So I, uh, the way it changed me is that it, I, giving up the processed food, you have to increase something. You can't just have low fat and uh, low carb. Mm -hmm. So it, you add in fat, you actually get full. It changes you hormonally. It changes it changes your your male or female hormones depending on what you've got going on. It changes your uh, uh, your metabolic hormones, mm -hmm. and you lose weight. And it's funny because vanity is a great motivator. Yeah. I get it. For me, it's a wonderful motivator. Yeah. And uh, but really, all the all the the tertiary, secondary, and tertiary benefits were what kept me going. Oh my gosh! Like this is this is something I need to do. Skin clearing up. I used to get the cystic acne. You know, yeah. stomach upset, uh, bronchial stuff. I would get. I'm sorry. I just it's okay. Is this something that you notice like right away or, or? almost almost immediately? Yeah. But then the the, the kind of long term effect of I was always the gal who would get the bronchial infection three times every winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would get the 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 whatever the thing is. I had had the asthma all that stuff cleared up for me. Mm. So I just thought that was like a chronic thing that you have to deal with with growing older. Right. And so it's important to not get sick all the time. It's important yeah. to have a good immune system, especially yeah, yeah. in this day and age. Yes, Holy. yes. So uh, that's kind of how that was really important to me. And it was because of podcasting with Vinny. He's the one who invented NSNG, No Sugars, yes, no, grains. no Sugars, No Grains. And, uh, and you you can hear it on the early time of the podcast where yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to do Weight Watchers. Like, I was like, right. shut up, Vinny. No, You're but, talking about. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And then I did it and I was like, oh. I'm going to write my own book. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, the, other, the, the misnomer of like no fat, low fat, it's making everyone fatter. It, it sure did. You know, I mean, because that's it's how like, we grew up in the 80s and 90s eat snack wells that are filled with sugar and have right. no fat. And then we all right. became these little like right. sugar right. addicts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and our, then it's yeah. so hard to shake. Because our big thing is like, you know, we don't eat a lot of sugar. 
But my big thing is if we, if we want something dessert-ish, right. I have to make it. I love that. You know, as opposed to going, I if, agree if with I that. don't feel like going yeah. out and buying it, you know, if I don't feel like making it, we don't have it. But that way I know what's in it. I can make my adjustments. I can coconut sugar it if I want to. I can maple syrup Great. it if I want That's to. That's awesome. Um, but then at least I know, because half this stuff, it's like, you eat the whole sleeve of fill in the blank cookie because mm -hmm. it doesn't taste like anything. It's not satisfying. It's not no. made of real. Yeah. You know, if you notice, like real if you, food, if you have real food, you. you get full. It's very rare that you're like out at a steakhouse and you're like, oh, I need three I just, more. I need another steak. Yeah, like <laughs> you're usually good. Like unless you're like a giant football player or something. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. yeah, but yeah, but I I totally agree. But you could. That's why that whole like Lay's potato chips. No one can eat just one. You can't. You can't. Once you start, you will polish off the bag unless you have some sort of willpower given to right. you by the Lord above. Right. I I don't have that. I was not right. blessed with the willpower. So I I think that that changing this changes your brain chemistry, which is why I named the books Eat Happy. By the way, I mm -hmm. it, I have not had a bout of depression since I changed the way that I really? eat. And that's, again, that's huge. Yeah. Being a creative person. Yeah. Right. Who, right. You know, we all deal with some sort of something. Right. And, but the um, chemicals reacting mm -hmm. with your own endorphins and your own body's chemicals yeah. right. cannot be a, a match made in heaven. Real food right. is, is much more not only palatable, but palatable to your body's system. Your body literally craves it and yeah. we've also forgotten how to like you eat the sleeve of cookies because when you eat that way that thing that i know it's a it has a bunch of hormonal names that i don't know i don't know the science or anything but your body is actually able to go uh you're full now stop eating right you know what i mean and then right. when you're hungry you go oh i'm hungry i'm gonna eat and you can't do that when you're subsisting on the the sleeve of cookies or the the right. bag of lays you know yeah. it, it never tells you that you're yeah. done it never yeah. shuts off yeah. it's yeah. just like a bottomless pit okay so you and Vinny tortorich co-host my um co-host fitness confidential yes mm -hmm. um started with his book no sugar no grain fascinating concept very cool it's helping so many people but what about doing the podcast has taught you about just where we are with our food and our relationship oh. with food. I mean, you have a dance background. I right. have a dance background as well. That'll give you um, some things. You know, to we've deal been with. staring at our bodies since mm -hmm. the leotard went on, and you know and that mm -hmm. whole sort of you go through those phases of dysmorphic stuff, and right. then you're like, no, I'm good. But there's always or pre puberty, like, and then you yeah. hit puberty, and you're like, whoa, whoa. yeah, whose hips body is and this? boobs? What yeah. are those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So where are you in your sort of from all of your own research and yeah. you know, having a couple more minutes on the earth, like, have you gotten to a point where you're yeah. like, well, I'm accepting, I'm... I like this. I, I, yeah, I'm much, much more accepting of who I am. You know, we all love everybody else, but we rarely love ourselves yeah. as much as we love yeah. everybody else. And uh, it's it's been interesting because now I'm to the point where the books have been, I've been doing this for a while. The books have been out for a while. There, we have thousands of people in our Facebook groups. I get so many messages. He has the documentary, Fat, a documentary, which is out. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the tail end of that. And so we've been getting a whole bunch of new messages from that. And I can see the progression based on the same progression that I personally went on, which mm. is I already knew I had to give up gluten because that was 2002 and that was okay. And that was a temper tantrum. And then he's telling me, you got to give up sugars and grains too because they're not doing you any favors. And I was like, meh, <laughs> temper like, tantrum. I'm Italian. Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> I how can, my grains. It's Italian and Southern, like both of them. Those are all they're the all, things. It's all sugar and grain. Sugar all and of it. And by the way, in Italy, they test every child for celiac by the age of six. Mm. The place where there's all the grains. Yeah. yeah. They have an awareness of it. Here, yeah. They're like, what? Mm. Oh, you're just doing gluten free to try to no, right. you know, uh, no. So then, then it was the blood test coming back about the dairy, and, I, and then it was like a, when wow. my doctor said you have to also give up dairy. I started crying, and I wanted to like lunge at her. <laughs> I had a physical, visceral <laughs> response where I wanted yes. to be like, "No, it's been so much." <sighs> and so I get it. Every time somebody writes me and says, "I got your book," but. There's, not happy. There's there's uh, peppers, and I can't have nightshades. I'm so mad. And I'm like, I know, I know. <laughs> but, you, you know, yeah. take a breath and calm. And I, I see myself in all of them because I get it. And people are hurting right now, yeah. and they're looking for answers. Yeah. People are uncomfortably heavy. People are sick. People are on medication, like yeah. crazy medication. And they're told that 
like oh. real crazy man. You must be speaking the truth. I am. Yeah. The earring Preach, girl. Oh. The Lord has spoken on our the set. Lord. The Lord has spoken through my earrings. His ears y'all. are close to you now. <laughs> I know. But no, people are people are really hurting. And and so and I get a lot of that. And I and I get it because I was I was hurting too. So I just yeah. I always remember that. However, I think now my new job is to get people's emails, tweets. Instagram direct messages, Facebook messages of objections and complaints and go, "Uh uh-huh, I get it, but just try it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I hear you. That was me. But yeah. just try it. Give it 30 days. I was going to say. See what happens. Yeah. It takes what? Average average 28 to 30 days to make or break a habit. You Because you know Probably how 60, that but goes. But I say 30. Cause, yeah. But know. it's like you know how that goes. Right. So try this. And then you can always go back. But now yeah. at least you have an A and a B to go which For do sure. I feel better? Yeah. Well, and the, the biggest mistake people make is we all have this diet mentality, you know, dance background, mm-hmm. that we, we can like portion out a thing and just have, I'm going to have two bites of this and then I'm going to have that at 4 p.m. And like, it, it's crazy. And with this, no, you're just, you're allowed to eat as yeah. much of the foods yeah. that are in there as possible. And in fact, I'd rather see people overeat when they first start to go through that adjustment phase. When yeah. they, and then all of a sudden they'll be like, oh, I notice I'm now I've now backed off and I'm not eating as right, much food. Right. They get scared. Yeah. They get yeah. freaked out. Yeah. Because you think when you go on a diet, you have to deprive yourself. You're right. And I always said if the diet industry, if I wrote a book called Hate Yourself Thin, I would be a billionaire oh. and I'm gonna write it. You We'd guys. be on your boat right now. Right? Exactly. On your catamaran. Do, having yeah. a, a swaying yes. <laughs> Sort of relaxing, yeah. lulling interview. I would be on a sea do in the back. Someone would yeah, be exactly. standing. Yeah, he would yeah. have yeah. Yeah. in the background. No, <laughs> he I would mean have the, a soundtrack. Yeah. I mean the deprivation, <laughs> living in the lack of anything. Yeah, is is not a long term recipe for happiness. No, you know, and and that no. you know, it's just it's not a a, a long term recipe. If you will. I will. Speaking of recipe. Yeah. Wait, I want to know something. Oh, okay. What are, be, this might have to do with that, but yeah. what are some like maybe uh, uh, misconceptions about the foods that you can eat that you mm. might think are like, you got to stay away from that, that are actually really, really good for your body and your mind? Well, probably fat, which I know fat's having a moment right now, but I think inside, in their heart of hearts, at yeah. least people who are probably, 35 to 40 and older, we're like, are you sure? It's like butter's back? What? Yeah. (laughs) And and my girlfriend who is 55, she told me, she was like, flat out, you can never tell me butter's good for me. I will never believe you. And okay, that's fine. By the way, people are adults. I don't care. I don't care if they do this or not. I just want to say this is available. Should you be seeking that information? I just, I don't care what you choose. If you don't want to have butter, that's fine. Have some olive oil. Have some coconut oil. Yeah. Uh, if you're afraid of coconut oil, have uh, so if you're afraid of of, of meat oil. fat, yeah. then don't eat meat. You have the avocado, have the olives. Have that's fine. Uh, I, I think that I finally feel like I, I don't know. I'm just tired of the the vegans and the meat eaters just always at each other's throats because yeah. I think we can all agree yeah. <laughs> that processed foods once you take them out. Yeah. Everybody feels a lot better. Yeah. So, yeah, I think fat's definitely been demonized, and it still is. Yeah. To some yeah. extent, and yeah. it should not be. Well, and even some things that are supposedly healthy. Right. Once you package it, it's processed. That's true. So you know something you know because I'm vegetarian, hundred mm-hmm. percent of the time. Right. I will occasionally have dairy. Right. Um, but I don't eat soy. Like I stay because a lot right. of the vegan stuff is processed. It is very processed, and, and it's the, soy the based. Impossible Burger and the I know the Beyond Meat's a little bit better because it's like the pea protein, but the Impossible Burger right. is soy based. It's totally. soy based and has it's gluten, very processed. It's re- mm-hmm. Yeah, so Gly- um, glyphosate. You know the round. It has some yeah, Roundup in it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Roundup. Yeah, the weed killer. Yeah. Yeah, so you oh won't get any cool. weeds. Right? You won't cool, get any cool, cool. weeds in your gastrointestinal tract. <laughs> I don't That's which, by the way, we it. all have it because we've all been this eating that This conversation is That's making a whole me other really conversation. hungry. That's <laughs> gonna clean you out. Um, yeah. So, okay, so if I'm not in my walk-in closet or my booth, I'm in my kitchen. That is my mothership. I love that girl. Okay, so I said to Anna before we rolled, the only thing better would be is if we were cooking while we were having we're this convo. We're gonna do that. Completely. We're gonna cook. Don't. Don't threaten me with kitchen. <laughs> Come on over, I honey. Like, Ding dong, you know, I hear you in here. We're neighbors. I yeah. live up the street from you. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So these beautiful books. They are beautiful books, Thank I you. must say. Eat happy. And eat happy. Two. Are, no. Two. Those are spiralized zucchini noodles, by the way, which everybody, so those are having a moment love. as well. Yes, yes. 
But I um, feel like that was 2016 um, um, when that um, um, came out, so I was a little ahead of the curve. Yes. So how can people get these? Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of a little site called Amazon.com. I've heard of it. Amazon. It's, it's really going places. Which yes. means if you order this right now, you'll have it tomorrow. You'll it's triple free. the order. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> No. Yeah, uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Uh, actually, there's a website that I love called IndieBound.org. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you can go and put your zip code in, and then it will tell you the the indie bookshop near you where you can oh, get cool. it. Um, this is amazing, and and then also we'll make sure stay on uh, stay up with Anna on Insta. Yeah, at Anna Vicino and yeah. and on at AnnaVicino.com. Instagram's my favorite of the socials. It is. Yeah. Because you can well, you can put pretty pictures and stuff, but then yeah. it's just you can do stories and it's more fun and yeah, lime totally. tart. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. I totally no, that's, interrupted you. No, no, I that's, will I will go over you for. I citrus. made that for years with just a regular gluten free crust, and then I figured out how to do a grain free. By the way, I will say what the hell is that? that cake tops? Oh my god! Okay, so let me clarify the the sweets chapter because yes. we were saying earlier, if I'm going to make something, I'm going to make it homemade. Yes. If I'm going to have a treat, I'm going to make it homemade. Yes. And I 100 yeah. percent agree with that. This book is. Uh, people definitely always want like really binary black and white diet books. Mm -hmm. This is not that. This is a low carb cookbook that has right. a desserts chapter. Right. And what I have done is when you're going to make a dessert, I want you to make it homemade. Yeah. Yes. And I want you to make it with the least amount of sugar possible. And by the yes. way, coconut sugar, maple syrup, honey, all that stuff, sugar, sugar, it's all the same. Yes. I don't care which one you use, but just use the least amount possible yes. to make the recipe work yes. and make it feel like a treat because that's the whole point. Yes. Why yes. eat it? If, and you know you're not I mean? eating it every single day. So then your palate goes, oh, yay, this is special, as opposed to, oh, this again, right? Yep. So the pictures are beautiful. Thank and you. you did that. I took the pictures. I found out when I published the first book that it was going to cost at least $50,000 to photograph not even a third of the recipes in the book. Uh -huh from a professional photographer and being the bootstrappy gal that I am. That's which right. Which you are. Which I am. I went down to Sammy's camera in Pasadena that's got a right. Canon the camera. That's right. And they're yep. gorgeous. And uh, I can see the progression. Gorgeous. Look at these pics. The, the progression from the first <laughs> book to the I second I think you could win an award, a photography <gasps> award. Oh my God. Well, Add I, it to her list of chip beef dip. Oh, that's really good. But you can make it without the beef, and it's like just a nice like it's French onion dip, dip kind of thing. Chip, chip dip. dip. So, did you pay yourself for doing yes. photography? Um, <laughs> <laughs> turns out it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> turns out you can't do it that way. No, but I I got the camera and I took some courses online, and I said I'm gonna beautiful. I got to make this happen. They're so beautiful. At that beautiful. point, I had written 154 recipes. For the first book, and I was like, "Oh, they said fifty thousand dollars." Like, wait, what? Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's beautiful. It's crazy. Um, you guys, you need to get some of this in your life. Yeah, I would jump on that. So excited! Right up. So excited! Um, Thanks, you guys. So then so we'll cool. have eat happy. Also, is that coming? even more eat happy? Eat happy. Corky's revenge. I don't know. Eat happy Infinity? again. Eat happy yeah. again. Keep eating happy. The three peat. <laughs> the th three trilogies are like so eat. happy eating. Ha <laughs> We just reversed Now you're stuff. just messing um, with Jaren's. Okay. But speaking of, okay, so talent is great. You have that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. But. <laughs> but. When you add to that, mm -hmm. having business knowledge and acumen and yeah. skill, it's a game changer, right? Yes. So do you have any advice, tips, wisdom for people watching, creative professionals, not necessarily voice actors or on-camera actors, about yeah. having and running your own, because so many of us are solopreneurs, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. how do you make good business decisions? What, what <laughs> by, you know, mistakes? By making bad ones and learning from yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Like, what have you learned about, like, how you keep yourself well going business-wise? I, I have learned, well, first of all, changing the way I ate actually gave me more energy because mm. I would definitely have that slump in the afternoon. And then let's face it, you're not going to recover from that. Like I wasn't, yeah. so like if I want to, I can work late into the night or I can get up super early and it's not going to like rock my world or mm -hmm. shift anything for me. Um, I learned that I need to have help. You can't do it all alone. So I have uh, a couple of, like my friend Tori comes into town from Phoenix mm -hmm. every like couple of months. And I know she's going to stay for like a week or 10 days. And we, knock out okay. recipes mm. and I can I have the kind of thing where I can say okay here's what I'm thinking I want to do like uh I want to do like salmon like but like a salmon puttanesca so I say chop up the thing and the thing and the thing yep. and she'll prep everything yep 
And then I'll literally run out and do a promo session and then run back in and then say, okay, park, put this together. You know, well, she sous chefs for me. Yeah. yeah. And that helps me to manage yeah, my yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, because I know my strengths and my weaknesses, and one of my weaknesses is going to the grocery store in LA after 9 a.m. It gives me tremendous anxiety mm. and I don't care for it. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. I need somebody else to go to the grocery why, store. Why is that? Because it's so crowded and I, see. Yeah, I right. don't like it. I'll go in the morning. I'll go early in the morning. I go if I don't really have a session, I'll go early, early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like going early. I probably yeah, I like going really late at night. I like never go on the weekends. I don't like going no, on the no, weekends. No. <laughs> I go off peak. Yeah. 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 No, I off peak. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's the word. Yeah. 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 I can't. So yeah. So managing the business stuff. And the other thing is early on when I first start, I always knew I wanted to do voiceover, which by the way, I know that you guys probably get pelted with the I want to get into voiceover. What mm. what do I do? Da, da, da. And I As you like, probably do. I all the time, and yeah. I always have my top three people that I refer, and you're one of my top three people Thank that you. I refer every single time. And uh, and then I know I, I actually have a template, and then I know if people actually execute any of the homework that I tell them to mm-hmm. do, and then they come back and have a more clarifying question, then I'm like, okay. Yeah. I know that you're You'll actually serious about phase. that. Yeah. But I, I, I will say everybody that I know who is successful at voiceover always had a drive deep within them since they were little to want to either perform or do the funny voices or they were funny people or they just, they loved, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? They're like, oh, I love Mel Blanc or I love, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just, they, there's something that there connects a them. There's a passion there. Yeah. Yeah. And the passion for me was definitely always there. So when I first started, I came to town and I brought all my stuff over to Nancy Wolfson, all the stuff I had booked in Georgia when I lived there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I had a pretty good, record of stuff there i had yeah. stuff that, and she goes nope <laughs> threw it all out what else Next. she's like nope yes and i was like okay i was like yeah. I, I was willing to throw myself into the mm-hmm. process yeah. that's another thing business wise yeah be willing to submit that mm-hmm. you don't know anything no try to know what because we're always most dangerous when we think we know yes what we're doing and yes. obviously the older you get the more you realize you don't know anything <laughs> well yeah <laughs> because everything freeing. you knew is not even relevant <laughs> no, anymore i know yeah. you gotta learn yeah. new stuff it's very freeing yeah. so so I, you know, I went into that with a very, a very open heart and ready to be bossed around. And, and I, that's a good thing. Yeah. But also I, that was back when you took, it was 2003 and you would take your CD and walk it into an agent's office. I don't know if anybody walks into agent's offices anymore. No. Um, you would get you just, arrested. You Not would get really. arrested, right? Probably. You have to email an yeah. MP3. So I would walk in and, and the, and the person who took me was uh, Shane Cormier at Daniel Hoff. I remember Shane and, Cormier, mm-hmm. great guy. Yeah, and he, because even after studying and even after working in Atlanta and even after doing a thousand improv shows in Atlanta and even after doing like all this stuff and working on camera, I still needed to learn how to do voiceover and actually right. audition. So I would go into his office every day and he would work with me every day for the year and a half that I was with his agency. And um, I, it was invaluable. Like He just taught me right, right. So, so much. Right. But I think it's the it's the balance of you know the, there is a very big difference between confidence and arrogance, and For sure. having the confidence and the belief of no matter you know you, what is it you fall down seven times you get up eight right you know that and that's the hardest thing to do yeah that no matter what yeah. but but also being open enough to say I can you just tell me I, right. I'm not I'm not going to just come in and say this is what we're going to do it's, right it's, it's absolutely a, a two way street um, did you so you said you always knew you wanted to perform. Yeah. And so what happens when you're not as busy and when you get knocked off your course a bit? You got to do other things. How do you power through? How do you (laughs) navigate those and still go, yeah, I still want to show up and keep doing this? You know, I, I remember early on, I don't know if you, do you guys know Gary Vaynerchuk? I I don't know Gary. Mm -mm. He is kind of like this, uh, this social media presence but he has he has a, a a media company but he started off doing youtube videos for his family's wine business and he wrote a book mm. called crush it which i think was like 2007 or 2009 mm-hmm. and he was the first and i read it because i always liked his personality online i just found him online randomly mm-hmm. and he was the first person to say you know if you like making gluten-free cupcakes and you like dog walking you can do both because we have what's called the internet now and it's like a new thing you can put your content out there and he's the first one kind of that I found mm-hmm. to predict these 
micro audiences, I suppose, like yeah. Yeah. And, which we now know as seen with podcasts and with self publishing and with yep. blogging and with all vlogging, YouTube. Everybody's been able to kind of access that. If you have a gift or a story or a right. information to share, there are people out there ready that, to that consume that content. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of a nice you thing to You just have to, to keep putting it out there. Have to keep putting it out there. Yeah. So for me, again, it wasn't, I couldn't, I'm not great at like sitting and, and waiting for the phone to ring. It's very frustrating. I will mm -hmm. get in my head and I'll be like, what am I, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing? want to be better. Uh, taking a class and brushing up is always great too. Mm -hmm. You should do that. But then also pursue other interests. I just feel like being a well-rounded person is good. But we were always taught, like when we were kids, it was like, you know, TV actors couldn't even be film actors. And then it right. was, then it, then film actors started doing TV and everyone's minds were yeah. blown. Yeah, exactly. And that felt like the first of like, like the, the, the meritocracy started to kind of mm -hmm. come into effect and it wasn't as much of a, I mean. Yeah, yeah. everyone I, was compartmentalized. Right. Yeah. And now people are doing all kinds of things and you know, movie actors doing a web series and also the podcast and the thing. And, and the voiceover. And the voiceover. Right? Well, yeah, and the voiceover. <laughs> and the voiceover. And the voiceover. Yeah. You yeah. know who you are. <laughs> 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 you know, oh, who did I? Uh, well, that concludes part one with our good friend Anna Vicino. Stay tuned next week for part two. Yes, check the credits to follow where we can all be on social together. Come on, it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always have time for a little buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.